companies in india are governed by indian companies act 1956 now students this law prescribes a particular format in which the financial statements of a company should be prepared and presented section 211 of companies act 1956 clearly prescribes that the financial statements of a company should be prepared in the format as prescribed in schedule Six of the Companies Act. So, according to this section, the format that is given in Schedule Six should be followed while preparing the financial statements. The balance sheet of a company is prepared according to Part One of this Schedule, that is Schedule Six. So, Part One prescribes the format of balance sheet now students why is it that it has been prescribed there are two three factors first one being that companies actually have funds which have been contributed by the public since these funds have been contributed by public they have a right to know where their money has been used secondly it brings about uniformity in the presentation of accounts which makes them more comparable so now coming to the format of balance sheet as in schedule 6 part 1 again students the format of the balance sheet remains same that is the accounting part we have assets and we have liabilities but on the top it is written as balance sheet of the company as on date as per schedule 6 part 1 of companies act 1956 this is written on, on the top and then we have the same format that is the asset side and the liability side the right hand side is the asset side here we have amounts left hand side is the liabilities side and this is amount now students asset side is further divided into five major headings and these major headings are first one being fixed assets remember these are headings so the first heading is fixed assets what are fixed assets fixed assets are those assets which have a worth or a working life of more than 1 year they contribute to the earning capacity of the business then second major heading is heading is investments investments mean the money that is invested outside the business then we have current assets comma loans and advances now students it is one major heading under this heading we have two subheadings the first one being current assets and the second one being loans and advances so the first major heading is fixed assets 
then we have investments the third head heading is current assets loans and advances then the fourth major heading is miscellaneous expenditures now students miscellaneous expenditure includes those expenses which have not been written off in previous years then lastly we have profit and loss account debit balance debit balance implies that it is a loss had it been a profit it would have been represented on the liability side but remember debit balance means only that balance which could not have been deducted or there was no reserve available out of which this loss could have been deducted so once all the reserves have been utilized and still some loss remains that is the amount that will appear in this profit and loss account that is debit balance so students on asset sides we have five major headings that is fixed assets then second one investments then we have current assets loans and advances it has got two subheadings by the name of current assets and loans and advances then the fourth major heading is miscellaneous expenditure and the last one being profit and loss account debit balance coming to liability side the first major heading on the liability side is share capital it has got various subheadings by the name of authorized capital then we have issued share capital then subscribed share capital then called up and lastly paid up capital so the first heading on the liability side is share capital and it has got various subheads under it the first one being authorized capital authorized capital means the capital with which the company has been registered then we have issued share capital it represents the amount of shares that the company has issued out of authorized share capital so obviously since it is the amount issued out of authorized capital that means this amount in every circumstances would be less than or equal to authorized share capital then subscribed capital subscribed capital means out of the issued amount the amount that has been taken up by the public then called up called up means the amount that the company has called till date and paid up the amount that has been paid by the shareholders then coming to second major heading second major heading on the liability side is reserves and surplus now reserves and surplus include the amount of reserves it includes both revenue as well as capital reserves revenue reserves in the form of general reserve profit and loss account pnl appropriation account and capital reserves in the form of capital redemption reserve or capital reserves even the securities premium account appears in this heading then the third major heading is secured loans now secured loans means those liabilities on which you have offered certain security that is security of assets or security in any other form but these liabilities are secured from your side by offering certain assets as security so they will come under the heading of secured loans it includes bank loans and debentures then we have unsecured loans
Unsecured loans means those liabilities which you have taken but have not offered any, any sort of security on these loans. Then we have current liabilities and provisions. Now students, what are current liabilities? Those liabilities which you have to pay within one year. So this heading has two major subheadings as current liabilities and second one being provisions. So now students liability side has first heading as share capital. It has got various subheadings in the form of authorized capital, issued share capital, subscribed capital, called up and paid up capital. Then the second major heading is reserves and surplus. Then we have secured loans, unsecured loans and uh, the fifth heading is current liabilities and provisions. It has got two major subheadings that is current liabilities and the last one being provisions. It is here that we total out the balance sheet. Remember the liability side has a sixth heading also which is usually written after the total and that heading is called as contingent liability. Now students remember this amount is not totaled in the balance sheet. So now we have the skeleton format of the balance sheet which shows the headings on the assets and the liability side. The asset side has five major headings fixed assets, investments, current assets, loans and advances, miscellaneous expenditure and profit and loss account, debit balance. The liability side has share capital, reserves and surplus, secured loans, unsecured loans, current liabilities and provisions. And lastly, after the total contingent liabilities.